Hi guys, welcome to Golang Tutorial Part 4. This is Tensor from the Tensor Programming Blog. Today we're going to be expanding upon our knowledge of templates. As you can see here, I've got our uh, web app that we were building in the last tutorial. And we're going to start writing more things into it. I'm going to show you how the Go templating language works. How we can implement inheritance, caching, things of that nature. Okay. So let's get started. If you look over here, you notice that there are a few more files in here. I've got a statics folder, which has all of our um, <coughs> has JavaScript libraries, um, Bootstrap, for example. We've got jQuery, I believe. Yeah, Bootstrap, jQuery, Modernizer, npm, etc. We also have some of the Google fonts. Anyway, I brought all those in. I used Initializer. I'll show you what that is if you don't know. Initializer lets you just create boilerplate HTML as well as bring in certain things, polyfills and jQuery, etc, etc. You just download it, it comes in a zip file and you unzip it in wherever you want. So, yeah, it's pretty nice if you want to start any kind of project. Okay, so for a refresher, let's take a look and I'll show you what the actual web app looks like and what it does. So if we load it, oh, as you can see, this is also another change I did. I added a bunch of filler text into our text files. So we have two pages, test and edit. We can edit these pages. And when we edit them and hit save, it actually writes our edits into a text file. In the next tutorial, we will get to how to actually write that into a database. But for now, Let's expand the front end. What we need to do to expand the front end is to create a base HTML file. So let's create a new HTML file. Let's call it base. And we're going to cut all of this out. We're going to cut out the doc type. So there we go. Just a very simple HTML skeleton. And then we're going to use Golang. It's templating, double curly braces. We're going to write define and we're going to call it base. We need to also put in an end statement here so that Go knows that this is our template. So inside of this template we're going to bring in our main templates. So we have two pages here and we can define both of them as main. We can just write template main and depending on the URL that we're at it will import one of these HTML files. So let's actually define these. Now I've defined it our edit that HTML file as main and our test.html file is now defined as main. Now if we were to run the app um, nothing would really happen. In fact no pages would be displayed because Go doesn't have instructions on how to actually parse these templates. So we have to actually implement that into our main application here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create two global variables. Now you can implement these into a function if you want. It makes things a little bit neater I guess, but uh, for the sake of simplicity we're just going to implement them directly as global variables. So our first variable is going to be called template view. So it's our template for our view and it's going to equal template dot must. So we're creating a new template and in this case our template is going to be called test and now we are reading in all of the template files that we want to parse for this particular view. In this case we're going to bring in base and test.html. Now we've created a second global variable as you can see template edit and this is parsing and caching the base and edit html. Now we need to actually edit our view and our edit function so we can just comment out these two lines from both of the functions. So in our view function, we're just going to say template view, execute template, and then we're going to read in our IO writer, so our HTTP response writer, and then we're going to read in the string of the name of the actual base template, which is just base, and then we're going to read in the title of the uh, actual template that we are using here which is just our p value here 
So that's it for this part, and we can implement the same thing into edit. So there we go. First of all, I screwed up and I put the base inside of this folder, in the static folder. Let's move it to the web folder. Okay, all right. So as it is, let's run this and see what happens. We had an error because we forgot a quotation mark in main or in the test.html. We also had the same problem in edit as well. Okay, so now we're running the program. So if we reload test, this is what it's going to look like. It's not going to really look any different, and edit is going to look the same. Let's actually look at the HTML here. So if we look, there's no real difference, aside from the fact that we have a head with nothing in it. And our body is right here. So now we want to import all of our CSS and JavaScript. So we're going to make a template for all of that stuff. So let's make a file called index.html. So the first thing we want to do is create a header. And so all of this stuff is the stuff that's going to go inside the header of our base HTML. So I've created this little piece of HTML by cutting it out of the initializer HTML index file. So it's not really that difficult. Uh, the only changes that we needed to make were we needed to change the file path for the static files because everything is now in the statics folder. Without it, it won't actually know where to go to get these uh, items. So let's leave it as is. Now we need to implement this into our base HTML. Now notice I'm actually putting a dot here. That's because this is a function, whereas the define here is not a function. In Go, in the templating language, you need to put a dot when you're dealing with a function. So when you're declaring something like template, you're putting a dot here because it's telling it that it's a function. If we look at our edit file, for example, if you see here the dot and then title, it's basically telling that we're pulling in a piece of information from a function in this case from our uh, page struct and the same with our body here so we have a f function here and then we have our variable and then we're saying okay feed this variable into this function that's basically what's going on as well in base except this is the function here and there's no variable that's being fed into it okay so before we run our program we need to actually implement this template into our HTML templates here. Okay, so now I've added index to our two variables here, and it should parse all of these variables together, or all of these templates together, rather. So notice that parse files is a verratic function, so we can actually put in infinite, infinite arguments because it uses a slice. This is just something to note. Now let's run this and see what happens. If we reload everything, now inside of our head we have all of this stuff. However, we're also getting a bunch of problems. As you can see, we're getting some get errors here, meaning that it's not actually loading these CSS and JavaScript files. So we need to rectify this. And there's a very simple way to do that. We just need to tell Go where the actual files are located. So we do this inside of the main function. So basically what we're doing here is we're telling the Go server to serve these files as well. Okay. So here is our little function, and as you can see, we're passing multiple functions into this. So we're basically saying, okay, we want to handle this statics folder. We want to strip the static from our actual prefix, and then we want to actually serve the statics folder. Now, if we rerun our program, now we're getting no get errors. Things are looking a little bit different because the font just changed. We have no CSS classes yet, so nothing has really changed all that much. So now we want to bring in some of that CSS and JavaScript functionality. So this should be sufficient for our edit body. Now let's deal with our test body. Okay, so now let's take a look and see what we've actually done. So if we reload, as you can see here, we've got just a very simple looking uh, HTML file. We go to edit, things look a little different. As you can see, our edit box looks a lot in more interesting. Our save button's blue. It's kind of looking nice, but it's still not looking like a great web page. And great web pages all have navigation. So why don't we add a navigation file here? Something that we can actually navigate with. We're actually going to go back into our 
index.html file and we're going to define a area called navbar. So here's our simple navbar. This is just a simple bootstrap navbar. Notice that basically we've put it inside of the same file as our header, but because we're defining them as two separate blocks, it won't really matter. So we could, in theory, write all of our templates in one file, though that would get a little confusing. And as you'll see a little later, that um, it's actually to our advantage to structure things this way. There are some very subtle things that Go has inside of it, inside of the template language rather, that allows it to do some really cool things. So let's actually implement this into our base HTML. So we want our nav bar to be above our main, and that should do it. Let's run this and take a look at what we've got. Alright, so now we've got our little nav bar. It doesn't look too great. There's a little bit of padding here, which is annoying. Uh, normally I'd go in and I'd change the CSS, slightly change it. Also, another annoying thing is that if we go into the editing file, we can't navigate to the other editing file, as you can see. Here we're on the editing file. If we hit test, we go to the test URL of test rather than the edit URL of test. So we can actually change this. Before we start screwing around with the nav bar, I just figured I'd bring in a footer, so I've brought in Ajax, jQuery, Bootstrap, and then our uh, JS, and also coincidentally we've got Google Analytics here. So, if we want to have two separate nav bars, depending on the page that we're on, we can actually change it. So, let's actually remove the nav bar from this here, and let's define it back into our one in our edit and one in our test. In edit we will be putting in here edit, edit. So now if we run our program the nav bar should change accordingly. We're on the test route. If we go into edit now we're changing back and forth between the editing as you can see editing test editing edit. We could also add the other bits into here buttons rather but there's no real reason because we already have buttons that allow us to go back and forth. So we could actually bring in a real footer here. So actually put an end to the page. That would be nice. Make things look a little bit better. And the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to use what are called blocks. So a block is pretty simple. Block allows us to basically dynamically change a piece of HTML based on where we are. So it's sort of like a variable. It's sort of like allowing us to define a template as a variable. So now we're going to mess around with blocks. So let's go into our index here and we're going to create a body. So here's our body. As you can see here's the actual HTML part of our body and now we're bringing in block main and we're ending things. So basically what's going to happen is either the edit HTML or the test HTML based on where we are is going to be imported into this block here. So rather than being inserted in directly into the base HTML, it's going to come into here first and then it's going to be uh, changed into body, which is then going to be inserted back into the base HTML. Now I said that sounds a little bit more complicated than it really is, but it's not. So if we change our main to body, let's run things and see what actually happened here. So this actually worked. I know it doesn't seem like anything really happened, and that's because nothing visual happened. But the difference is, is that with, no matter which page we go to, we're actually using a different template. And it saves us a little bit more time on the code and stuff. And now we've got this little, nice little bottom header here, or footer rather. And we can actually remove all this padding if we want make it actually align with the bottom of the screen. As you can see, things didn't really change, but that's because we are not really in a place where the page actually takes up the entire page. But if we go to our editing tab, as you can see here, we don't have any white space between the actual footer anymore. Okay guys, so that's it for our template or at least our basic template tutorial. In our next tutorial, we'll start to work even more on our back end.
so we'll actually build a little bit more on the actual application we'll give it a little bit more functionality and we'll look into adding a database either we'll use SQL or MongoDB or maybe even both so if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe if you have any questions comment and if you for whatever reason didn't like the video then go ahead and throw in a comment and a dislike and whatever you want alright guys hope you have a good night